What is going on? Welcome back to your Lake Fort guy. Hey, welcome to my mess of a backyard. Got my little kid over there. Say hi, Ty. Hi. Make sure to say hi, Ty. Yeah, say hi, Ty. Hi, Ty. That's Ty. That's my boy. Out here getting a little baseball practice in, if you guys can probably tell in the background. In fact, you can check it out right here. Oh. Oh, home run. Yard. But it is another episode today of the Guides Network. What's going on right now is it's fall. Well, it's not quite fall, it's the end of summer, but got a little bit cool for, for about a week or so, a little bit early, and dropped the water temps way down into the lower 80s, and actually queued in some turnover activity. And when that happens, you know, the beginning of the fall stages kind of get started. Well, we did a video last year, myself and Mike McFarland, talking about how those fish migrate, where they go, and how to catch them. We did a really good job on that video. I feel like we, well, I feel like we did a really good job on that video. So what we're going to do today is I'm actually going to replay that video. It's got a lot of good information that's going to help you up starting right now and going forward through the next two months. So here you guys go. Here's a little in detail information on how to catch more and bigger bass during the fall migration. <laughs> fall transition guys and man this can be <laughs> i'm going to talk about three different baits but more importantly what i want you to take from this is, is is how these fish move in and out of these shallow water areas i'm going to cover the shallow water driven stuff the backs of the creeks mike's going to talk more about some some offshore uh transitional stuff but i really want you to pay more attention to the positioning of the fish how i find the fish how i locate them that's much more important than the baits themselves because in the fall there is a number of ways to catch fish. They are there to feed, they will eat a lot of different things. So let's get started with that right away. Uh, what you want to look for is you got these creek arms, uh, you know, on Lake Fork or any lake. You'll see these big feeder creeks. These fish and this, this bait fish, it's all about bait in the fall. If we could leave summer and get in the fall, it really becomes hyper focused on shad and there's a little bit of a crawfish deal that i'll throw in there for you guys as well it's a unique thing but but really mostly we're focused on shad uh, shad is the biggest deal that time of year the shad will migrate into those creeks all the way to the backs of them sometimes and the bass are going to stay right with them the whole time we're into the first part of september uh, this should this is actually already starting to happen somewhat the real huge migration will be occurring over the next few weeks um, those fish will pull off that main lake structure as the water cools and those bait fish will pull off and they will start making their, their way into the creek. And what you really have to pay attention to is the stop signs, guys. These fish are gonna use stop signs on their way in, right? And what I mean, what do I mean by stop sign? Well, a stop sign is gonna be a, a, a feeding plateau, a, a spot where these fish are gonna stop to rest and eat on their way in and on their way out. You can catch them coming and going on these places. Uh, the biggest two for me that I'm looking for are secondary points in the creeks and uh, creek channel swings inside the creek. Wherever a creek channel swings right up against the bank line, uh, that's going to create a real steep ledge. It's going to create a flat spot on top. Those fish are going to use that easy elevation change to as a stop sign. When they come in there and they're moving down that creek and all of a sudden it swings against the bank and there's a three foot flat on top, they're going to pull up on that flat and stop and eat a while. That's what they do. Uh, same thing with the points that stick out. As they're moving down the middle of that creek, some of those fish are suspended in those deeper creeks moving in. Uh, when the main lake, when it, I'm sorry, not a main lake, when a secondary point juts out into that creek and creates a high spot, it's going to funnel those bait fish closer to that surface, and those bass are going to use that as a place to stop and eat. Um, 
those are the two main structures as far as underwater contours that you want to look for in your feeder creeks as these bait fish migrate. Points and creek channel swings. That's your big deal right there, okay? Uh, now, to compound some of that, docks, grass, brush piles, all these things can be used by these fish as they move in. The biggest deal is don't pay attention to any of it when you're deciding where these fish should be. Look for the structure. Look for the points in the creek channel swings. Okay, once you found your point in your creek channel swing, if there are docks, brush piles, grass associated with that structure next to adjacent to that structure, fish those. Those will become temporary homes for the bass. That grass will become a temporary house. That dock, that brush pile is where he will live. You can catch him in there. When he's ready to feed, he'll pull up on that hot spot and you can catch him on top of there. So definitely cover that water. Fall is an important time of the year to cover a lot of water. Anytime fish are moving around a bunch, you have to move as well to find them. That's just the way the game works. So what I'm really telling you, just go into a creek and keep your eyes open. And that sounds like a lot to do, but that's kind of how it works. You stick and move a lot in the fall, right? You're going to fish here, you're going to fish there, you're going to move a bunch. As you're doing that, it's very important to pay attention to the signs. When you're looking for bait fish, we're not talking about menace, right, guys? The big thing, like I said, is the shad. Look for the thread fin shad that are four or five inches long, the mature thread fin shad. Look for gizzard shad. Gizzard shad are about the size of your hand, okay? When you find that type of bait, that's when you're going to find the fish you want to catch. Now, the good thing about fall is those fish will move in shallow water. When they move in shallow water, they will show themselves to you. Okay, now once you've found some fish, this is the important part right here. This is, this is your key to catch fish throughout the fall. Once you have found that school of fish and they're making their fall transgression, they're making their fall migration back into this creek. So let's say you went to the, the second secondary point in the creek and you found fish and bait and everything was right and you caught them. Once you've found that, you can count on it. As that water temp cools, those fish will shift further back into that creek. You have to follow them. That is how you stay on them throughout the fall. Find them early and then stay with them. Stay with them. Stay with them. Because they will move from one stop sign. Stop signs are what? Points, creek channel swings. They will move from one stop sign to the next, further back in that creek, until that water reaches the lower 60 degree mark. And then as it keeps getting colder, they'll make their way right back out through the same stop signs. Okay? That's the big deal. Find each stop sign as they move. Follow them and then fish their houses adjacent to their stop signs. That's the big deal right there. All right, that's the important part. Now I want to give you a few techniques that I use. I'm not going to go real in-depth into how I fish them. First one, and probably the most important, is a shallow water crankbait. That is a Six Sense Movement ADX. You guys have heard me talk about this. This is the most dynamic shallow water crankbait I've ever thrown. It does not have a square bill, but at the same time, that bill and the way this bait wobbles so wide that is the most snag free has the most the best deflection qualities of any shallow crankbait i've ever thrown hands down bar none there's not another one like it uh, it's the best now i will say this sometimes in the fall especially especially when you've had some cold front weather those fish can get a little bit finicky and i do go to a regular square bill that doesn't have quite as much hard wobble right this thing really wobbles hard it vibrates like crazy it will rattle your rod uh, a square bill has a more subtle vibration i will go to a square bill at times when the fish don't seem to be quite as aggressive maybe it's you know a, a light northeast wind bluebird kind of day uh, i will go to a regular square bill but most for the most part day in day out i want to throw this because if i can get them biting this i'm going to catch bigger fish because it's a harder action it's a harder reaction that the fish have to it it's more of a reactive bite uh, and you will tend to catch bigger fish on that movement ADX than a regular square bill. Uh, a lot of times we have foul weather in the fall. Uh, cold fronts coming through, stir up the water, make it dirty. You see the chartreuse and black back. That's probably my favorite color in the fall because I can catch them in clear water on that, but I catch them really good in the dirty water compared to the shad patterns. But everything that I throw on a moving bait in the fall will be shad pattern related. This is a shad pattern for dirty water. I will throw you know, the regular um, shad drone is my favorite color from six cents on the, the true shad patterns, the white base shad patterns, uh, shad drone. There's the crankbait. That's my number one tool. Like we said, covering a lot of water, there's not a much better bait. When you're talking about fish that are eating bait fish, when you're talking about covering a lot of water, 
There's not a lot of options better than that one right there. Okay, that sometimes the spinner baits better. Like I said, in the fall you can use all kinds of baits. This is the one I like the best. Where are my big fish heads at? Where's all my trophy hunters at? Are y'all listening? Listen. That right there is a perfect size replica of a full grown thread fin. The biggest thread fin and the smaller gizzards, right? That is the perfect size replica to that. That is a six inch flow glider. It has a phenomenal action. They are back in stock now on the Six Sense website. They are linked below. Be sure you check it out if you want some. Um, if you want to go big fish hunting in the fall, this is a great time of year as we get in the fall to catch fish on big baits. It's a phenomenal glide bait. I've caught more fish on this glide bait than I have all other glide baits combined. It's my favorite, hands down. Um, glide bait is a complicated bait to fish. I would highly encourage you to look up my how to fish glide baits instructional that I did on the guides network playlist on this channel um, but that right there absolutely the time of year to throw it okay this one I'm gonna give you the the, the, the cliff notes on we'll do another video late in, later in the fall where I'll give you all the full full-blown details on this because this is a special deal this is a deal that I know just from reading up and learning and educating myself on wildlife uh, that's how I found this pattern it has been a tremendous pattern to me over the years. Uh, really, it's a little better once we get into October, November. This is a little later in the fall. Um, baby crawfish are hatched in the summer. They, they bury themselves in the mud and deep water in the summer. When the water temps reach the upper 60s, those crawfish come out of their holes out deep, and they make their way up into the shallows, and they really like grass better than anything else. Um, but a baby crawfish has underdeveloped claws, it's a green pumpkin to a brown color, uh, and it is a protein-packed bass candy that they love to get on. It's the one exception to the shad rule in the fall that I found, and I throw a very small quarter ounce. This is a quarter ounce jig that you can buy up at LFT, right? You can buy this from the Lake Fork Tackle store. Quarter ounce jig, like an olive green color, and I use this Berkeley Havoc, uh, oh, what's that called? pit boss I think is what it's called somebody will know comment below I know you guys I think it's called the pit boss anyway use that because those crawls those baby crawls have those underdeveloped claws and that's exactly what that mimics and a lot of times I will take these middle two and rip them off so that that bait looks like that right there just a perfect imitation of a little crawfish with underdeveloped claws they absolutely choke this. You throw this up off the edge of a grass mat. It has a very slow fall. It imitates one of those baby crawfish that fell out of that grass mat perfectly. And, and I've, man, we've really caught them on that deal. And they absolutely choke that bait. And I'll, I will give you guys, when we start catching them on this, I will give you guys a full in-depth episode on how I do the baby crawfish fall jig bite. Because that is a phenomenal pattern that I've kind of had to myself. Uh, probably won't this fall after this but that's okay because i like helping you guys catch more fish that's what it's all about but there you go so there's three baits more importantly really focus on those stop signs creek channel swings secondary points and really hunt those fish down and then stay with them on every stop sign throughout that creek they will pull up on them as they go in and pull up on them as they go out that's how you're going to catch your big schools of fall fish and it's an exciting time of year to, to fish because sometimes you can fish for a long time and not catch them but when you find them you're usually going to catch a lot, a lot. The, the biggest schools of the entire year occur during the fall. They will get in bigger groups than they do any other time. So try those out. Stay on those stop signs, and hopefully it'll help you catch more fish as we go into the fall transition. Hey, guys. It's Mike McFarland here, McFarlandFishing.com. Um, just kind of want to follow up here on, on uh, Billy's nailed it. He absolutely nailed the fall stuff. Um, there's a couple things I would like to add to it. Um, a lot of people's questions is, where do you know what's fall? What are the triggers? What are the what are the the clues that tell you fall's coming? The, the number one clue actually is the first day that we begin to lose daylight. So the minute that we're getting a minute less each day, next day, the fish have already been told by Mother Nature it's time to do it. Now they don't just jump and run. So now the next thing is influences cold fronts and obviously that water cooling down. So as that water begins to cool down. 
um, what happens before they get to those points is the mouths of these feeder creeks can pile up and you talk about the mother load and I'm talking about two three thousand fish sometimes the mouth of white oaks for example it can fill and they're at the mouth they're using ledges they're right at the mouth of that creek they are getting ready to do this migration that Billy just talked about normally the bait gets there first the bait will progress in front of these fish so the bait moves the fish move and they will kind of move in and out in and out depending on how fast we cool down so the biggest influence is this the days getting shorter and then our first cold front that very first cold front that we get every year here usually turns these things on like Donkey Kong they know that it's coming and it's coming fast okay my favorite thing about fall is that especially here in Texas back home at West Coast was totally different to what I'm gonna tell you now but these fish are huge they have had a long summer they are very hungry and here's the most important part the females are developing the eggs which means that body is demanding food more than they're even used to that body is saying I need it okay so if you want to throw big baits if you like big baits anybody that's a good big bait fisherman will concur the best time of the year is fall after the long summer all your spring stuff has grown so all the babies that were born in spring are now two three four inches everything is grown so my favorite and my only thing you're gonna get out of this the best thing is try and be just a notch in front of those fish predict that they're coming catch them when they're in the mouth just before they start to migrate because they don't all migrate at once they'll go in waves okay if you can find that pile up you are talking about some of the best fishing in the entire world um, and some of the most simple fishing jigs no brainer three quarter ounce jigs okay brim colors shad colors as Billy talked it's a shad bite so usually you know I'm gonna always stick with something in the crawfish or brim colors with but I'm still keen in more shad stuff one of my favorite things is a big worm okay red shad this is a 12 inch worm Berkeley perfect bait I'm gonna throw it on a blue collar uh, three quarter ounce stand up head and this really gives me that big huge profile that those bigger bass are looking for um, I could change things I could downsize and probably catch more fish but I like them big ones and in the fall as I said their bodies demand is huge they want big baits they're keen in on those shad another deal again this mm. spoon isn't big mm. enough um, I actually throw the Ben Parson spoon that big giant deal um, the magnum spoon but I just wanted to show you a big spoon a five six or seven inch spoon is ideal when you're out still in those mouths and I'm talking 18 16 18 20 22 feet before they've made that progression into those secondary points etc and, and creek bands um but i don't have a whole lot more that's 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 my favorite that's the money. that's my favorite right there and here's the thing about this i can use this at the mouth in the deep and I can still turn around and progress inside. When I get to one of those secondary bins, I can throw this around the docks that are located by. This is the tool. Just in my opinion, one of these two right here is something you can go to work with. You can cover a lot of water. You can really put the hammer down. This probably still would be my first choice for finding a location. But boy, I tell you, spoons catch big fish. Um, so do not X out a spoon. That's my three baits, but I do have one more that I want to add. Um, and that is basically that crawfish deal. I have found that as fall does progress, and, and I'm learning more about Texas every day, but in my four years here, I have found that this progression starts at the mouth, this progression starts to move in, and about that cool down time when they start backing out in that creek, if you'll go to a grass jig, uh, don't worry about this color, I just wanted you to switch off the football jig and get you to more of a grass or a flipping jig head in that creek in those bins you're gonna have a lot of tree stumps and things they have root balls so the latter part of fall I talked about the front of fall Billy covered the middle and fall the latter part of fall I'm gonna start coming back out of that creek I'm gonna hit every stump that I can on every bin and I like to use this type of a jig head because it comes in and out of that root a lot better than a football jig would um, so that's really just a little extra piece when you do get back in that shallow water if you're a jig fisherman get off that football jig you're not out in the middle of the morning you're not out in that open shore get to that grass jig head you'll find it works a lot better for you thank you guys for watching i'm michael mcfarland mcfarlandfishing.com we love you we want you guys to have you everybody down in houston should be in your hearts and your prayers we all need you 
Um, but thank you for watching. Well, there so you much. go, guys and gals. It's an exciting time of year for me. Fall is, boy, it's hard to argue against spring because we have a lot of fun. We catch a lot of big fish. I love sight fishing, but uh, fall is very likely my favorite time of year to fish. Uh, the numbers can get you know, huge. It's, it's the best time of year to catch numbers of big fish, for sure. We hope that gets you on the right foot, gets you on the right track as we go into fall. Uh, we'll be talking more and more about this type of stuff and more and more in-depth on the techniques that we're using throughout the fall uh, as it happens. And I guess, you know, hey, we just appreciate you watching. Mark, what you Absolutely, think? man. That's probably the best part and, and definitely a very motivating factor, knowing that you guys are enjoying this, knowing that you're wanting this information. It, it makes me, anyways, want to dig more and figure out how can I give them more. Sure and, thing. Um, sure so thing. And if, if there's something you guys want to see, a technique or something you want gone over on the channel, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching the Guides Network as always. Hope that helps you.